everyone this is the tutorial to show you guys how to make our pom-pom reef the original edition so i've laid everything out that you're going to need to get started we've got your wool choices just here your hoop your bag of pom-pom makers there's four different sizes included in there you've got your hanging loop your written instructions made by sticker and your wire so that's everything that's included in your kit. If you've chosen to use your own pom-pom makers, that's totally fine as well. You will also need a pair of sharp craft or embroidery scissors. And we also recommend a second set of scissors for cutting the wire so that you don't blunt your sharp scissors. Little tip for when it comes to assembling your wreath, we recommend using a good old coat hanger and just hanging this anywhere that you can. You pop your hoop just around here and let it hang. When you come to assembling, you can see a bit more what you're doing. It lets gravity do its thing and you can see how it's gonna look as you're going. So that's everything that you're gonna need. I'm gonna show you how to make some pom-poms to start. I'm going to clear this workspace and get started on that. Okay, so we're all set to make some pom-poms now. We've got your pom-pom makers in four different sizes. Biggest one is size one, two, three, and four. We've got your two pairs of scissors, your wire, and your wool. So on the written instructions, there is a guide to different designs and styles of wreath that you can make. It tells you how many sizes and amounts that you'll need of each pom-pom but this is just a guide you can do whatever you want and if you want to go completely crazy and creative do whatever you fancy we would absolutely love to see so i'm going to move these to the side because i'm going to start with this size pom-pom to get going this is your pom-pom maker the arms open up on both sides like this and they swing around as well and also it comes apart just like that it's not a problem you haven't broke it just pop the pin back in the hole and nip it together and you're good to go over time and where these do slacken up a little bit um, but you can just pop your arms back on and get going with that they're not broken or anything so that's all good so to get started with the wool i'm going to pop that side in and have your little arms out there and just find the end of your wool. So I normally hold it in place by popping it down with my thumb and then I just wrap and wrap over where I started just to secure it down. And then you just wrap, you're making sure that you're not going over these bits on each side and you're gonna fill it up until this little dip is level just there. If you come across a knot in the wool or a join, that's no problem, just keep on wrapping. Or if your wool snaps, just reattach with your thumb like I did before and just continue to wrap again. I find it quite helpful if I unravel quite a bit of my wool as I'm going, it just runs a lot smoother and saves me stopping and starting. level there and we haven't gone over the the sides just there so you need to close your arms down make sure that stays in place and doesn't pop open so that it doesn't unravel and then we just cut the wool just snip that keep that locked in just open up your other arms and then we're just going to repeat the process again on the same side. If you want to go ahead and pause the video while you're doing that and then join me when you're all done. Okay, so that's that all finished there. So we just close that arm down and I'm going to snip this so we're detached from the ball of wool. There we go. So that's how it's looking. You need to keep both of these arms tight down so that your wool doesn't become unraveled. So the next stage, we need to get our wire. So you just need to pull out 
a size, probably double the, double the length of your index finger. Just snip that there. There we go. Can't see that. Um, and then we're going to open up the arms really carefully and you go in the centre of your wire, the middle part, to the centre of your pom-pom just there. And then just close that arm down and the wire just comes around just there, like that. So the next stage is we're going to get our sharp scissors and we're going to cut up here. So I normally go from the hinged end, just if you go from the other end, it tends to lift open. So you just got to snip around here, just being careful that your arms don't open up and don't cut the wire either. And obviously just watch your fingers. Make sure that every little bit of wool is cut and then just turn it over, do it on the other side again from the hinged end. There we go, so that's that all cut. So the next step is we need to get the end of our wall again. Just here. And you're going to wrap it around the centre of your pom-pom there and just pull it down. You might hear a crack just like that or a click. There we go. And I tend to wrap that around again just for extra security. You can pull it nice and tight. There you go. And you can cut the longer bit that's still attached to the wool. Just there. So you've got your two hanging little tails. Now this part is super important because if you don't do this, then it will all become unraveled. So you just need to tie a simple knot So just like that, pull it nice and tight. Right through there, again, you might hear another click or a crack. There we go. And I tend to do another one just because I like to be on the safe side. There we go. So you've got your two hanging tails, your two bits of wire are still there. Now, now comes the fun part. So, we just pull up our arms on both sides, just like that. And then you're gonna pull your pom-pom, make it apart and slide off your pom-pom. There we go. So don't worry that there's little bits that aren't even because that's what we're gonna do now. So I usually hold it from the wires just to make sure that I don't actually cut these off. Get your sharp scissors, start by cutting those little tails off and just give it a trim. This is a good opportunity to get it quite nice and neat. So you can trim it later on once you're assembling it as well, but it's, um, it's good to do the bulk of it now and get rid of all the little bits. If it's slightly misshapen, you can make it more round at this stage as well. There we go, so it's looking more pom-pom-like as, as we go. Brushing off all the bits of fluff. So there we go. That looks good enough for me for now. There we go. So that's how your pom-pom looks. And you've got your two wires still attached in there and your fluffy little pom-pom. If for whatever reason your wire does come out, don't worry. So I'll just grab a bit of wire. So just cut yourself a little bit of wire and fold it over like that. You can see, give it a little nip on the end so you're creating a little bit more strength in it there. 
and then you just need to f open up your pom-pom find a little gap through the center and just push it through you might need to find the sweet spot um but it, it'll be fine that's just in case your wire does come loose there's an there's an option to do it after so that is how to make your pom-pom Okay, so I've just shown you how to make a regular pom-pom and now I'm going to show you how to make a speckle pom-pom, which is basically exactly the same principle. You just have, you know, two, three, four or however many colours you want to mix together in your pom-pom. So you just put your wool together, however many colours you're using, just pop them together like that and you just wrap them exactly the same way as you would before this way is quicker because you're wrapping it twice as quickly and like i say you can mix as many colors as you fancy for that just like that so you probably won't use all of the wool that you get in your kit i mean you might depending on how many pom-poms you make um but we don't like to have any waste so we do have tips on our instagram page which is at the troublemakers create and that shows you different ways that you can reuse the wool so there's less waste as well. So if you want to go ahead, make as many pom-poms as you need. If you're following our, one of our style guides in the written instructions, it tells you on there how many you'll need to make in each size. If you're going totally creative on your own, I would recommend doing a couple of different sizes in each colour just to get you started before you start assembling your wreath together. But just go ahead, make your pom-poms and then join me back where I'm going to show you how to assemble your wreath. Okay, so you should have made all of your pom-poms and you should have a selection that look like these with their little wires poking out of the top. For assembling, I've just hung my hoop off a hanger. I just rested it along there and I've hung it off the door. It's just easier for me to work so I can see what I'm doing as I'm going. If you would prefer a more flat surface, you could always attach your hanging loop just to the top and that will make it flatter against the surface, whatever you prefer. Or you could just work at a desk, whatever's easiest for you. So I'm going to show you how to attach pom-pom first. This is size two, so it's the second biggest one, so it's quite heavy, quite dense. So I'd recommend starting at the bottom and building your way up doesn't matter what design you're doing, I find it easier if you start at the bottom, purely because, and you'll see when I attach this, with it being heavy, you know, it, it'd be harder if you were just starting there, it wouldn't sit there. So what you do, you've got your two wires, pop a wire at either side of your hoop, and then you just cross them over the top, pull tight and twist. So we just twist around just like that. And only twist it a few times just for extra security and you'll have your little wire sticking up there so again it's at the bottom with it being a big one see it swings like that doesn't sit but as you build up the other pom-poms will secure the other ones in place so it's the best way to do it so this is a size three pom-pom so i'm going to attach this one so again a wire over either side of your hoop you just cross that over, pull tight and twist around a few times. I recommend not knotting purely because if you make a mistake and it's twisted, you can untwist it and you can start again. If it's knotted, it's a lot more work. So the, the smaller pom-poms, they can balance a lot easier because they're not as heavy. So you can see there, you, how you would start building up your design on either side with your pom-poms. So I'm going to attach a few more pom-poms on here and I'll show you what it's like once you've started to get your, your hoop quite filled up and then join me back then and I'll show you the next steps. Okay so I've attached all of my pom-poms now you can still see that all of the wires are still attached and there is a little bit of wool that needs trimming and neatening up at this stage as well. You can still tweak things. So if you feel like you want to move your pom-poms around, swing them around until you're 100% happy with the placement, then you can do that at this stage as well. This is the beast design. So it's the fullest one that we suggest. 
If you're doing a design, maybe a split design where you have some poms here and some poms here, you might need to do a bit more tweaking and moving around until you get the balance right because it's harder to balance when you've got a few there and it's heavier down this end. But once you're 100% happy with the layout and design, then we're going to trim all of your little wires. So I've got my scissors that aren't quite my sharp ones. These are my ones that I use for cutting the wire. And we're just going to find the wires and you just cut. There we go. So be careful because the wires can be quite sharp. So what I tend to do is I just hold the scissors over the wire and I just wrap the wire over the top of the scissors and then I just push it into the pom-pom so that the sharp bit isn't sticking out. So go ahead, snip off all your wires and tuck those wires in. much neater now. Now we get our sharp scissors and we're going to trim the wool on the actual pom-poms. There's a few little loose bits so we're just going to trim those. This is a good way to get some shape into your pom-poms as well so if you want to cut in to make them more round you can do that as well. Just make sure you get rid of any sort of little scraggy bits and make it much neater. It looks like a nice full pom-pom when it's had a good trim as well. Just looks much more round and fluffy. So make sure you're cutting all of those little stray bits off. Cut in, you want to create some more shape. So if you want to go ahead, trim all of your pom-poms until you're completely happy with it. And then we'll get on to the next stage. We're nearly done now. Okay, so I'm now back on a flat work surface, just I find this bit easier to do on a flat surface. So this is actually the back of my wreath, so it's face down. And I've grabbed my Made By sticker. It's a lovely little keepsake, so you can just fill out your name and when you made it, and it's just nice to look back on so you know when you did it. So just fill that out, pop it over. It's double-sided sticky tape on the back, so you just would peel that off. Find a space on the back that's not going to be visible from the front and then you just gently press that on and it'll stick there no problem. So that's how to pop your Made By sticker on. We're now on the final stage which is just to add our hanging loop. So this is the front of my wreath, I've popped it front facing now. So I've got my hanging loop just here, it's got just a little loop at the top there and just a little knot at the bottom. So you just pop the loop to end just at the top of your hoop, just a little bit just there that you can see. And then you take the knotted end and you just pop that through and then gently pull that to tie it. And there you go. It's easy as that. That's your hanging loop attached to your wreath. Okay, so we're all finished now. So you just need to find somewhere that you love to hang your wreath. You might need to do a bit of tweaking just to balance it out. And once it's in its home, just to get it absolutely perfect. There you go. So we just want to say we really hope you've enjoyed making your wreaths. Thank you so much for supporting our small business. If you wouldn't mind tagging us, we would absolutely love to see your creations. We are on Instagram at the Troublemakers Create. And we have a hashtag too, which is hashtag the troublemakers create. So thanks again for supporting us. We hope to see you back sometime soon. And we hope that you're going to enjoy your wreath for years to come. Bye.